Welcome to another Advent of Code walkthrough video. Today we'll be looking at 2022 day 23. So today's problem is called Unstable Diffusion, which is a reference to the AI named something Stable Diffusion, which is able to create AI generated art. Okay, so we get to our grove and we see that the plants are withered and broken, and a large group of elves have formed in the middle of the grove to try to regrow them, presumably. So we look up to see a massive snow capped mountain towering above us. It seems like the volcano has been dormant and without ash the fruit can't grow. Okay, let's see. So the elves have a plan. They almost have enough fruit and the ash from the plume will spread eventually. They just need to plant new seedlings. And so you don't have enough time to figure, let the elves figure out for themselves where they want to go. So you quickly scan the groves and see where they currently are. So this is a grid where each pound sign is an elf and each dot is empty ground in our scan. And there is empty ground all around the scan uh, a long way in every direction, so essentially infinitely. So we're not actually going to represent this as a grid. From the problem statement, just this part, each elf has a specific position. So it's obvious that the elves are going to be moving. And since the grid stretches infinitely in all directions, we're just going to store the elves' positions themselves. And this is another good day for complex numbers. Okay, so we have our grids. Let's see what the task is. The scan is oriented with north being up, and each elf follows a time-consuming process to find out where they should go. So they take steps in rounds where each elf alternates between considering where to move and then actually moving. In each round during the first half, each elf looks at all eight positions adjacent to themselves, including corners. If it is isolated, it doesn't do anything. Otherwise, it will look in four directions in the following order, north, south, west, and east. If there is no elf in either that direction or the two adjacent to it, so the diagonals towards that side, then the elf will propose moving exactly one step in that cardinal direction. In the second half of the round, once all of the elves have in parallel considered their moves, each elf will move to the proposed destination if and only if they are the only one that proposed moving there. If there would be a conflict, there is no movement. At the end of the round, uh, the first direction is moved to the end of the list. So this applies to all elves, so these will be cycled per round. Okay, so this is just an example. Um, these two elves will move north first, and this elf, since it can't move north, it will propose um, moving south, and then, so that will go here. And these two elves can move north, so they will propose moving up, but since these two elves propose the same destination tile, neither of them will move in the second of, uh, by the end of the first round. And so they continue going like this until they reach the end where all of them are isolated, so they all stop moving. Okay, and so if we keep simulating the rounds, eventually uh, the elves want to check to make sure they're on the right track. So after the 10th round, they will make sure that they've covered enough ground. So you will take all of the elves and take the smallest bounding box rectangle that can fit around all of the elves. And so in this example, we have a rectangle like so. If we take out the elves, the amount of empty ground within our region is 110. The question is, after 10 rounds, how many empty tiles are there? So let's grab our input first. The elves will just be an array of numbers. For each row, uh, for our line in enumerate line, uh, open zero, for each column item in enumerate line up to the last character to chop off the new line, R and C are now the coordinates and item is the character. So if item is equal to a pound sign, then we have seen an elf. So elves.append, and uh, we'll keep it so that the real numbers go horizontally and the complex numbers go vertically. So the column is the real value, so it'll be C plus R is the imaginary value, like so. So in this case, north is negative 1i, south is positive 1i, east is 1, and uh, west is negative 1. Now we'll also keep track of the moves array, which starts out as north, south, west, east. And now we need to simulate all of the rounds. To simulate the rounds, we first need to collect a set of where all of the elves are. 
so that they know where the other ones are. So occupied equals set elves. Actually, I think this would be a bit easier if we just kept the elves as a set. Okay, so we no longer need to convert it into a set at each round. Um, so the first step we need to do is the first half, which is have all of the elves consider where they want to move. So we keep a set of proposed locations once, and twice is the set of all overlaps. So we'll begin by doing all of the proposals. So for elf in elves, it will go through the moves and look in that direction. So first we need to check to see if it's isolated. So if all of its neighbors are not in elves for x in, we'll call that n and define it up here. n will just be a list of all of the offsets to the neighbors. So starting in the top left corner and going clockwise. So if all of the neighbor squares are not occupied, then the elf is isolated, so it does not move at all. Otherwise, it will look in each of the directions. So for move in moves, it will consider if there are elves in that general direction. So to do that, um, this is probably not the smartest way, but it's the fastest to write it without needing to think too much. We will just make a map of each move to the three squares that need to be considered. So scan map. For negative 1j, it's going to be negative 1j minus 1, negative 1j, and negative 1j plus 1. So basically what I'm doing here, doing here is just for each cardinal direction, which three positions does the elf need to consider before potentially moving there. Okay. So if all elf plus x not in elves for x in scan map of move, that means that the elf is able to propose that direction. So proposed is going to be elf plus move. If it's already in twice, then we just skip it. Otherwise, if it's been proposed once before, we add it into the twice set. And otherwise, if it hasn't been proposed by anyone, we add it into the once set just so that we can duplicate track the next time an elf proposes this space. Now we can just copy paste this down here and basically repeat the whole process. Except this time, we'll say if prop is in twice, if prop is not in twice, then we'll actually commit the move. So to commit the move, we'll just do elves.remove elf and elves.add prop to uh, change the element of elves to this. If we were using a list, we could just swap out the item at the index, but we're not, so we have to do this with the set operations. It isn't very slow anyway. The only really slow part is that we're manually recalculating, but this loop is a constant time operation anyway. Okay. And so theoretically, at the end of these rounds, our elves should now all be in the right position. So now we just need to check how large the bounding box is and subtract the elves to get the number of open spaces. So to get the bounding box, we can do min x is equal to the minimum of uh, x dot real for x in elves, and likewise for the maximum x. And then for the y value, we just get the imaginary. And by the way, if you flip the axes here, it won't actually change the answer. So don't bother checking if you have the axes right. Now we just print mx minus mx plus 1 times my minus my plus 1 minus the number of elves. The reason we have to do the plus 1 here is just because if mx is the same as, uh, if max x is the same as min x, then mx minus mx is obviously 0, but there's one column of elves available. Here, okay. Um, that's odd. That shouldn't be happening. Oh yeah, of course, because I forgot to break. If actually, I forgot to break here as well. 
if we've found a valid position and made the proposal then we need to break and same with here if we successfully move or even if we don't move because we've overlapped then we also need to break and this is actually going to run into a bit of an issue because we're modifying the thing we're looping through and also changing this so i need to like create a clone of it so elves clone equals a new s a copy of elves and then we can just loop through the clone and check for membership in the clone like so okay and not too surprisingly it doesn't work first try um let's see so this logic should be correct let's print out the list of elves just for a sanity check that looks correct the scan map should be correct for the north we consider northwest north and northeast for south we consider southwest south and southeast for east we consider ah of course, because I'm not rotating the moves array. Okay. So at the very end of the round, we just do moves.append moves.pop0. And the final thing is, uh, I've misremembered the problem statement. We actually just check the size of the bounding box. We don't need to exclude the elves themselves. Or do we? That's not the right answer either. Okay, let's keep going through the code to see if we've missed anything. So north, south, west, east, that's the correct order of moves initially. The neighbor array looks correct to me. If it doesn't have neighbors, then we skip over it. Oh, because I forgot to clone this part here as well. And this should hopefully be correct. Um, I think we do actually need to subtract the number of elves. The funny thing is all of these wrong answers are actually familiar because I'm pretty sure I got every single one of these during the actual contest. Let's see, what else could I possibly be missing? Ah, that. And there we go. So let this be a lesson in um, actually reading what your own code is doing. Um, I think ideally speaking I would have just copy pasted this entire loop down and then modified it. Um, but yeah, it's important to actually think about what your algorithm is supposed to be doing and making sure that your code actually implements that algorithm. And part two is fairly trivial today, it's just figure out how many rounds until the elves stop moving. And so we can just keep track of what the last configuration was. and. If the new elves configuration is the same as the old one, then we can just um, stop. So we'll change this loop to a while loop and keep a count of the number of iterations. Each time, if the last seen uh, position of each elf is the same as the new one, then we just break. And otherwise we set last equal to set elves. This set cast just makes sure that when we manipulate the elves object, we don't also change last. It just clones it basically. And we increase the number of iterations by one. And then at the end, we can just print the number of iterations. Um, looks like I need to offset it by one. And it takes a bit of time because my I didn't implement this very optimally at all. But after we give it a bit of time, it gives us our answer of 1,021 rounds. So overall, this problem isn't the most difficult. I just didn't read the problem statement correctly and missed the part where I said that elves don't move if they're isolated. So that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. And I'll see you tomorrow for day 24.